We're excited to dive in to all things High Point Market. I wanted to give you a little background on me, uh, on Sarah, and then we will dive right in. So again, my name is Risa Eldon. I'm the head of partnerships here at House. House Pro offers an end-to-end -end solution that empowers home remodeling and design professionals to stand out, win more clients, and manage their projects efficiently and profitably. Sarah, on the other hand, has a very extensive career. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about um, her beginnings to where she is today. Prior to launching Band Design, Sarah spent the first phase of her professional career in sunny Los Angeles, working in the fast-paced entertainment and sports industries as an executive at companies such as South by Southwest, CAA, and the Ellen DeGeneres Show. Her past experience helps her deliver timeless, unique designs to her clients. She believes the design process should be highly collaborative and feel authentic to each individual. Barney is a native of Austin, Texas, and a University of Texas alum with degrees in corporate communications and interior design. She was named one of Fortune Magazine's most powerful women next gen and one of Austin Monthly's Women to Watch and is a member of the American Society of Interior Designers and the Female Founder Collective. So thank you, Sarah, for being here with us today. I'm so excited to be with you, Risa. And how cute is your background? I clearly missed Thank the memo you. on that one. <laughs> my team gave me that for my birthday. Isn't that cute? That's adorable. That's so yeah, cute. I love it. The font is really adorable. So that if that that kind of gives us an intro to who you are and how you design. Um, lots of spunk, lots of personality. So let's talk a little bit about key emerging trends. What'd you see? What'd you think? Anything new? Or did it did it seem the same as June market? Yeah, no. Okay. So there was a ton of new introductions and so many new vendors. Um, so it was actually a really exciting market. Both markets in June and in October were great, but October, I always feel like is the more fruitful market. Um, so one of the key trends I saw, we literally saw it everywhere was leather accents everywhere. And it wasn't just leather accents necessarily. It was like small accents, like a table that would have a small little brass accent on it, like a wood table with a small brass accent or something like that. But really there was leather trim everywhere and little pieces of leather, or bigger pieces of leather. And it was just sort of like all over the place. And it, it stuck out to me because, um, we do a lot for young families and young couples and that sort of thing. And leather is a great way to sort of masculinize. Is that a word? I don't know, but um, a more feminine shape to make it more palatable to a couple um, and sort of make it feel like spunkier, like you were saying, a little bit more casual, but still really beautiful. And it almost makes it feel like a little bit handsome. So there's just a ton of little leather accents that I like really jived with. I love that. I love that. I feel like it ties back to fashion. I'm just thinking about some dresses that I've seen as I'm shopping for some weddings these days um, <laughs> and little le leather elements um, that kind of break up the piece. Like you said, add different elements of uniqueness um, and kind of make that piece feel a little bit different as we fall into, I guess it's fall, winter here now. I guess we skipped fall this year. Um, well, degrees here today. So, you know. Oh. You're in Austin, I'm in San Francisco. There's the difference. So yeah. you can pretend like it's fall. That's right, I've got sleeves. <laughs> awesome. And I did forget to mention that you were, you did partake as a style, style spotter at High Point this year. Um, so I know um, you got to get around to the different showrooms. Talk to me about what else you saw. Okay, so there was also, I talked about this a little bit in June market actually as part of the style spotters report that I did, but it was very prevalent again was asymmetrical pieces. And it was funny because um, at, when you're a style spotter, you do this big presentation at the end where you're sitting down with the other style spotters and kind of talking about key trends. And somebody mentioned asymmetry. And we did this sort of um, poll as to who liked it and who didn't. And I was one of the only designers that liked asymmetry. Um, I kind of like the tension it creates and I kind of like it. It almost becomes like a piece of art on its own when a piece is asymmetrical in a room. And I like that it kind of throws you off a little bit. It's a little bit unexpected, but so many of the other designers, like it threw off their symmetrical minds and they're like, I can't handle it. But um, I just really like that. It wasn't just asymmetry in the lines, but it's also asymmetry in the material. So there was um, a bench that Nathan Anthony, Nathan Anthony did, and it was like, curved on one side uh, that was upholstered and then the other end was these rounded wooden legs that were super cool um so it was just like imbalanced in shape but also imbalanced in material and i just really liked the interest that that brought to room 
And then um, another thing that we saw everywhere, everywhere was curves in everything. And I said in occasional furniture and upholstery, which is definitely true, but it was everywhere. I mean, even like bookcases that were rounded, um, dressers that were rounded, um, coffee tables. I mean, like everywhere it was rounded. There was even like some curved seating where the, it dipped down in, in the middle and it would just keep curving. So there was just curves, curves, curves everywhere. Like the straight line was gone um, everywhere we went. Do you think that's a sign of the times? Like we're all in our homes and we need our furniture to hold us through the rough patches. <laughs> I didn't think about that, but yeah, it's probably like now becoming emotional support furniture. <laughs> like not an emotional support dog, but like an emotional yes, support it's like a piece swaddle of furniture. for us. Everywhere we sit, yeah. it's to swaddle us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. That's what I was kind of thinking. I was looking at some of the recaps. Obviously, I didn't attend High Point, um, but it's kind of like the furniture is giving you a hug. Um, <laughs> and I don't know if that, because I'd never seen so many curves and so many furnitures. And now I'm looking at my furniture and everything's like hard lines. It even reminds me of taking it back to cars when cars were really boxy and now car cars have more of the curvature. Um, so I don't know if that's a sign that that's something that that's going to stay. Um, how are you feeling about implementing those pieces into um, some of your work? I love it. Like I love the rounded edges. In fact, a lot of the um, houses we're seeing being built, you know, now have archways instead of your standard doorways. So that's a big thing. I think it's a great way to bring in a little bit of architecture without going overboard or even having to be too pricey. Um, and then with upholstery specifically, I'm so tired of a sea of boxy furniture, uh, especially when it comes to like sectionals. I'm so tired of like the straight L and we're just doing it over and over. That just makes me... Ugh. Crazy. So seeing a lot of rounded, um, larger upholstery pieces was pretty cool. I like that. I'm excited for it. Cool. Let's see if I have a picture in here that we can um, drop in and see. Oh, well, there's some curves. Not a furniture, <laughs> not a piece of sofa, but there's some curves. Okay. Look, okay. Can I just talk about this light picture for a second? Because I am obsessed with it. It's from Hub Hubbard and Forge and it was probably one of my favorite things that I saw all of market. Those are leather straps. So kind of bring you back in those leather accents that I was talking about, but then obviously it's rounded. So you've got that curve edge to it too. Um, it was just like, it was just sort of like a showstopper. In fact, two style spotters spotted it and we had to like turf war over it and I won, but um, it, it was like so cool. And I think it would just look so rad over a kitchen Island. Um, it was just, and I don't know, it was something about it that was like so quirky and kind of contemporary, but those leather accents made it feel a little bit more transitional and like, again, more palatable. So I don't know. I just really jived with that light a lot. I'm really digging that light too. And the top part is brass, correct? No, it's wood. Okay. I thought it was wood at first. And then I started looking um, and then yes. in the middle of the circle, that's so brass, right? Cool. Uh, yes, yes. In the middle of the circle. Yes. And it's funny because I showed it to my team and they're like, it looks like eyeballs. I was like, I don't care what you think it looks like. I'm obsessed with it. <laughs> like, I'm I obsessed with it too. We have a question from the audience. Um, where the pendant is amazing. Where does the electrical feed come from? Oh, that's a great question. I don't remember what the, um, canopy looked like up at the top, but it's, it's in those wires that are, it's hanging from, but, um, I don't know how big the canopy is. And then you said it's Hubberton Forge, right? Hubberton Forge, yes. And they actually, there's another new light that they had that was a long, I, I had a hard time picking actually between this one and another one. It was long and thin and it had um, leather straps that were holding the whole thing up. And it was so cool. It's so hard to wow. find the linear lighting, I feel like. So that's why I got excited. Oh my Somebody gosh, I see someone said they used it over an island. Yeah. Can you please send me a picture? Because I want to see it. <laughs> yeah, send us a picture, Lauren. Um, yeah. Either one. Um, we'll drop our email in the chat, but definitely would love to see that. Healdsburg is one of my favorite places since I live up here. I go up there a lot and I could totally see it over a kitchen in Healdsburg. Totally digging the vibe. With all the wine. I love like all the different elements included. Yeah, it just makes it so interesting and so unique and so different. Yeah, I loved it. And they said it's a long rectangular canopy is what the yeah. canopy looks like. And over on the left, it, um, Noir had these really fun, those are actually candle holders, but I would use them as like a bud base, but like a whole collection of marble vases and, and candle holders um, that I just thought were a nice little accent and touch. And they have great accessories that people often forget about. So um, that was definitely one of the showrooms that had the most curves. Everything was curved. Love that. Next, I wanted to talk a little bit about emerging lines, new products um, that you saw. Again, um, I'm hearing 
different things from June market to October market. Uh, like what designer I talked to this morning felt like it wasn't worth her time to go um, because she was just there in June. But then I'm hearing mm -hmm. different, like there was newness. It was more like lines were slimming down. You know, usually when there's a bunch of stuff shown at market, it's not like everything makes it. It's kind of like a showing of who's going to order what. Um, yeah. And they kind of are slimming down. Um, so it, maybe market wasn't as overwhelming for you. Um, did you feel that vibe? Um, yes and no, but I will say, so normally it's not in June. So I agree like between June and October, it was a really tight turn. Um, normally it's in April. So I feel like if it had stayed in April, it would have felt a little bit more fulfilling. Um, but I know when I talked to a lot of the vendors in June, most of them were saving their introductions for October. So I, again, I feel like fall market is usually a little bit more fruitful than um, summer. Of course, we're dealing with, um, you know, all the back orders and all that crap that everyone's dealing with. So I think you see that from the vendors and why they there's slimmer um, lines. I will say in June market, something I noticed that I hadn't really noticed before in previous markets was so many vendors were only showing prototypes. So they would have a prototype on the floor and they would say like, it's actually going to be a foot taller than this, or it's actually going to be handles on this side instead of this side, or like this isn't the final version of it, um, where you'd see a little of, that, little of that in the past, but this time I felt like it was, or in June, I felt like it was a ton of prototypes and nothing really that you could actually like buy off on quite yet. Okay, got it. So you're buying off a piece of paper, which isn't ideal, but do understand given this global supply chain issues, why it was like that. You'll get it and in then, here. <laughs> you'll, yeah, we'll talk, we'll save, we'll go through the fun stuff first and then we'll save okay, the <laughs> stuff for the end. Um, but yeah, I want to hear kind of what you saw that you felt like, um, you know, new lines. I know that's like such a great part about market. Um, and I know a lot of people even so are at round top right now and they're like, okay, I've yeah. never been to round top, but there's inventory that's there. I'm going to go take, um, a truck and grab as much stuff as I can and have my own warehouse, um, pivot a little bit on the sourcing front. Um, yeah. but talk to me a little bit about, um, what you saw that was new. Yeah. I mean, and, I, and we can talk about round top later. I was just there on Sunday. Um, oh, yeah, so yeah, there's a lot for you. Yeah, it's, it's an hour away, but it took me three hours because there was F1 in town. So anyways, I'm not going to get into that. Um, so, you know, with the furniture, yeah, there was a ton of, like I said, statement details on pieces, whether they be big or small. I think it's a way to make something feel really special and original. So you saw a lot of, you know, interesting hardware or, like I said, brass inlays on pieces um, that normally it would just be like, you know, a standard wood table now had brass inlays in it. Um, so you saw a lot of that. Um, the one key emerging thing that I saw, and I have sort of seen a trend of it over the last couple of years, I'm so excited about because I'm an art junkie, is um, exciting, accessible, original art. Um, people get really lazy with their art, I think, and especially with clients, I think a lot of them, toward, you know, it's towards the end of the project, they don't care anymore, they just throw up something on their walls. Um, there's mm -hmm. so many great art vendors out there that um, you can either buy original pieces or you can buy um, reproductions that are just different and interesting. And, um, you know, if I were, I actually, coming from Round Top last, uh, on Sunday, I told my friend that I was with, I go, do not let me buy any more art. Cause every time I go to Round Top, all I buy is art and I have no place to put any more art. And so now I have a collection of art that I just need to get rid of or sell to people that I just, it speaks to me. So I think um, there's a lot more accessibility to interesting art pieces than there used to be. And it doesn't have to be like serious and stuffy or scary. Um, and then also, I love that. Sometimes people say it's really hard to find art. Um, so that's, that's a really it good is. But once you find what you like, like I know what I like in art, I tend to be drawn towards the same three or four different types of things. Um, but you know, it's once you find it, then you find the vendors you like, and it doesn't have to be this like huge, like hotel reproduction art that's has no personality to it. It can speak to you. Um, and then uh, we saw a lot of multi-purpose furniture. Um, I think this goes in line with the COVID life. You know, there's a lot of work from home pieces. Um, we saw some incredible like standing desks. Um, we saw a lot of stuff that like, you know, it's a coffee table, but also it has stools underneath it. So you could sit and use it for, um, you know, if you wanted to play games or whatever. So a lot of stuff that can function in a lot of different ways. And I think that comes from people living in spaces that maybe didn't have all the functionality they had before and they needed to have a lot of different things, especially like in big metropolises where you have a smaller place to live. Now, if you're stuck at home, you need your space to function a lot more for you. 
So um, there's a lot more multi-purpose. Well, I love that. I love that. Some good questions coming in. One, uh -oh. um, Roundtop is not a vendor. Roundtop is an event. It's an antique uh, show. Sarah, tell us a little bit about Roundtop. So Roundtop is, um, it started as a very small antique show and now it's exploded. It's ridiculously large now, but it's, um, it's like 12 miles of antiques in central Texas. Um, it happens twice a year, but you can find it off periods too, because a lot of these vendors will be there. Um, off, like the real true antique vendors will be there off periods, but, um, other vendors come in. I saw a lot of like the furniture vendors we would buy from having tents there, which I thought was kind of strange <laughs> to for a round top. But um, we actually ended up buying a lot of accessories and art there because um, you could find unique one of a kind pieces at great prices. I have had less of a, I take, I say this now, but I don't mean it about this past market I went to. It, it, I've had a hard time finding um, good furniture pieces there. But when I was there on Sunday, I actually saw a lot of really great well-priced ones. Um, so it's, it's worth a trip. It's, it's got, it's become like really crazy. Um, it's halfway between Austin and Houston. So, um, if you're coming in from out of town, you could stay in either place and it's about the same distance. Great. Um, scrolling up. Um, we will get to pictures. Um, I see that I am scrolling back up here. Um, there's a lot of questions. Yeah, I know. I know. I know we're getting there. Um, and we will talk about some of these pictures in just a second. Um, but Sarah, did you have any, off the cusp um, brands at High Point, reverting back to High Point, um, where you shop for art, um, any specific vendors? So there is one I discovered, um, his name is, this name of the studio is called Iconis. It's E-I-K-O-N-E-S. Um, it's, it's just photography. Um, and I met the photographer, it's just one photographer. He was a super sweet guy. He does this very stark black and white, mostly nature photography, but other stuff too. I, black and white photography specifically like speaks to me a lot. So I was very attracted to it. So I loved, loved, loved his pieces a lot. And they were so affordable and they were all original prints um, of his work. And you could buy them unframed for as little, I think it's like as little as like 75 bucks, but they also do really high quality framing in up to like 60 by 40. So we had really, really cool stuff. So he was like the big one. Oh, somebody says, repeat it. It's, I can't hear, can I just type it? Yeah, you can type it in the chat. Okay. Um, but anyways, so they were great. Um, and it was, it was, they were a fun discovery for sure. There's another painter there who named Wendy O'Connor, who I discovered a few markets ago. She does really beautiful, um, mostly females, but they're like abstract. And we've used her in a couple of projects as well. I'll type her name too. I did. I got it. My computer just like shakes when I type. So, oh. um, and then what about like, are you going to like left bank or any of those places? Um, what are your, no, I mean, uh, we will if we like need to, yeah, but honestly, uh, like I prefer something a little bit like it for like smaller one-off pieces or for designing for kids, those tend to make more sense. Um, but for like a, you know, an, a high end living room, I'm not going to put a left bank piece. I'm going to find something, whether it be on Cherish. Um, there's a studio called Tappen that I order a lot from there. They have fantastic uh, curations. There's also, um, here, I'm just going to type them. Jen Singer Gallery, um, is, they have really cool artists that they, and then there's a, um, there's a website called Buy Some Damn Art, which actually has really great pieces from smaller, um, upcoming artists. That's hilarious. What's that guy? I remember seeing him at market one year and that does the black um um the vintage rug shop she carries it. Um why can't I remember his name? I don't know if it's your vibe, but they're really cool. They're like um charcoal. I not like art if I think it looks like something I could do. <laughs> weird paying for that <laughs> no totally um gosh i, I can't do very much in terms of art <laughs> so <laughs> so funny yeah. does that in the audience does that give you all um yeah, a I'll couple names to start from and then yes we will go back and kind of talk through these pictures that we're showing here because i do see some fun stuff and it definitely in these pictures when i was seeing some of this felt like there was like a nod node nod node um to back no, to that node. 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 i don't know it's too, basically monday for me today like you know, 
<laughs> not um, to kind of take it back to mid-century modern um, kind of like, and did you feel that way at market? And maybe it's just because this picture and I'm looking at the colors on the left-hand corner of it yeah. and I feel bright and the only place I've been in the pandemic is Palm Springs. So maybe that's why I'm getting that vibe. <laughs> I mean, maybe a little bit. I think mid-century had such a moment in like the early mid 2000s, like, you know, 2010s or whatever that, um, that was done so poorly. So I think people are trying to bring it back, but like do it right and do it justice and not make it seem like themey, you know, mm -hmm. or like, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. I think people got so caught up in Mad Men and all that. And they're like, oh, we got to do this. And then they're like, look at their homes and it looks like some bad museum. So I think that they're trying to like, those lines are definitely reemerging, but not necessarily in the most like on the nose way. Got it. Got it. That makes sense. Cool. Anything else you wanted to talk through um, these pieces that you okay, so had? The one on the left is the one I was talking about, the asymmetrical bench from Nathan Anthony. And I almost fell asleep on this bench because it was like a fur rug, basically. It was so fun. Um, and I can't, I feel terrible that the, I can't remember the woman who designed this, but she has a, she was so lovely. I spoke to her for a while. She has like five or six pieces in this line. So the bed behind it has a similar line. Um, there's three or four different pieces. Um, it's called the Lace, L-A-I-S, L-A-A-I-S. Um, and they, I just really liked how funky they were. And then on the right, it's kind of that leather accent I was talking about. So this bed, this from Serried, um, it, you know, typically I think has like a little bit more of a feminine shape, but the back headboard obviously is a woven leather, which gives it a more, um, uh, masculine feel. So I felt like it was a really nice balance and I'm not allowed to say this, but I'm going to say it anyway, but I was talking to a woman who worked there and she was like, she was this funny old lady and she was like, we call this our 50 shades of gray bed. <laughs> like, well, lady, she, you can't you know, say that. <laughs> That's so funny. And also, I don't know if you just saw the messages in the chat, but um, a couple of people just mentioned, please tell me that gray is out. Yeah, so sick of gray everything. So 50 shades of orange. I don't know. I don't know. I would love to say that gray is out. I definitely like don't want to use it, but people still want it because they're scared. So... Yeah, I feel you. That that, that showroom, that was... What was the name of that showroom? Um, here, let me type it. Perfect. Well, you're a fast typer. Cool. Um, great. Um, let's see what else we have in store here. Um, I heard there was a lot of tables, a lot of yeah, I did with a lot of tables. In fact, I had yeah. sort of like table issues. I had so many tables that I picked. So the one on the left is from Arteriors. I'm gonna be terrible remembering any of the names of these, but um, this piece in particular is super cool. It, they have a shape like this already that they, this is a new introduction, but they have the same table in like a brass or bronze they've sold for years. But this time they wrapped it in rattan rope. And um, so it created really cool movement, but the, again, kind of going back to that multifunctional piece of it, they staged it next to one of their existing coffee tables that you could just tuck it under. And so it gave it some layers um, and it was just a really beautiful piece. I liked it a lot and I just like the texture in it. And then the one on the right is called, it, I don't know what it's called, but it's from Alder and Tweed. Um, and again, I liked the rounded lines of it, but I also liked that it was very functional. It had the, the um, shelf underneath or the tray or whatever you want to call it underneath that you could stow away boxes, you know, for remotes and that sort of thing. And it had just really great scale. So I just liked that piece a lot. I love that. I love the layered look um, with the texture and just yeah. giving you some more space there. I love that. Interiors always delivers it. I always love their stuff. Uh, we started talking about boo. Boucle. I can never say that word oh, right. Wow, Boucle. Yeah. We started talking about that because I did kind of um, an online high point market run rendition when um, the pandemic first happened. Um, and we started seeing a lot of boucle. And then um, I'm hearing that it's it's here and there's a lot. Um, what are your thoughts? Okay, I, have, I have feelings. So um, that came up in our panel that we did about boucle. And again, we voted on it. And I was the only one that said I didn't like boucle. So um, I like it, but I felt like I saw a lot of it in 2019 market. Um, and now I'm a little tired of it. So I'm kind of like, eh, it's okay. But people are real hot on it still. And I bet now that I'm tired of it, I bet that that means that clients will want it because that's how it tends to work. As soon as we get excited about something, they don't want it. And then as soon as we're over it, they want it. So um, I don't know. People love it. Designers love it. I just happen to be the one that doesn't. 
Yeah, 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 totally. I was literally the only person who voted against it on our panel. <laughs> so. That's so funny. Okay, what I'll do is I'm gonna share my screen and go through the Dropbox file um, and okay. pull up some of these pictures so we can see that. Okay, so somebody was asking about this table here. This was arteriors, correct? Correct. Cool. We showed you that. Um, yeah, what about this guy? Okay, so this, I just love the scale of this. It was huge. I mean, I wanna say it was probably at least 18 inches tall. Um, and it was just, I like the scale. I liked the texture on it. And this vendor, it's B-I-D-K. Um, I, I don't know if there's a way you say that or if it's just B-I-D-K, I have no idea. But they are a fantastic resource for accessories. Um, and I believe their buy-in is pretty low. If, if not nothing, I don't know, it may be zero, I don't know. But um, they're just really great to work with and have a lot of fun accessories. Love this. I love, and this is kind of that organic, I know that trend, like organic curvy stuff is back. So I think that hits on it. This is not totally. a rounded table, Sarah, what's happening here? I know, this is one of my style spotter buddies uh, made this line. Um, I think it's called the paddock line. She She's a big equestrian person, whatever you call equestrian people. Um, but so it's like a nod to, um, horses and equestrian life. And um, I just really liked the chunkiness on the top, but like the light delicateness of the face. So it was a good balance. And this is from Charleston Forge, not to be confused with Hubbardton Forge. Charleston Forge, got it. What are your thoughts here? I don't know, it's still low. Oh, well, this one is like an old, I picked this one cause it's like, um, what do you call it? It's like an old staple. Like it's so easy. Um, this is from CR Lane. This is probably one of our go-to upholstery vendors. We use them almost in every single project because everything okay. they do is such high quality. Um, this is a swivel chair. Um, if you've never sat in a CR Lane piece, I, I've, I've probably sat in all of them at this point and every single one is, com is so comfortable. I don't, every single time, it's always comfortable. And so they're really great at their proportions. It's never like, you know, the back's too low or anything like that. Um, I love the fabric they draped this into. You could do COM, you could do whatever you want with them. But um, I just liked it. It was clean, easy, simple, but personality too. I love this because if you have kids and they like to spill things, I feel like the spotted, uh, like it. I mean, kids yeah, ruin, yes, ruin everything, even if they're <laughs> good ones, you know? <laughs> yeah, totally. Oh, here's some of that art we were talking about. Yes. So this piece is called Acadia 4. Um, that's just one example. I mean, some of it's more um, metro, like city life. Some of it's very naturey. But he just did really great stuff. I loved it a lot. And it's primarily all black and white. There's a couple of color pieces, but mostly black and white. I love this. Oh, that's super pretty. Super, And they'll do the framing for you? They'll do the framing. They have amazing Italian wood with muse museum glass framing. Or you can just, if you don't want to pay for the freight with that, they'll roll it up and um, ship you once you can print locally or frame that's locally. That's awesome. Yeah. And price point on this? So good. So good. Like the just the print of like a... 23 by 34 or something like that was like 78 bucks. Wait, what? That's insane. Yeah, that's why I was like, what? Margin, oh, like, yeah, oh, margin, margin. I, I see him charging more. He's like, oh, okay. <laughs> I love that because that's a great place for you designers to think strategically about your businesses and be making margin, right? Yeah. You're sourcing and you want to create a beautiful space, but you also have to make money. Yeah. Um, so if you can find vendors like this yeah. um, where the pricing is really good um, and art is so important. It's, it's and every a, piece is signed as well. So you kind of have that special touch. Love that. What's happening okay. here? Little so table. This, this kind of goes back to the multi-purpose pieces. Uh, Libby Langdon made this for Fairfield. Um, and it's, you can change out the fabric on the top, but these little stools tuck under this coffee table. And again, just, I, th I like the functionality of it and just being able to pop up and, you know, play a board game or whatever. Love that. Oh, I love this. Four hands. Four hands. Um, Yep, an Austin local. Um, and so uh, I like the texture on this one. The, the back, you can't really see it, but it's got a caning detail. Uh, this was one of their new introductions. I like the scale of it. I actually should have put in a picture of the one of me next to it because it's about double my size and I'm five foot six. So um, it was a pretty good scale. 
I love this. It's not rounded. I'm surprised. I did I see know. something from them that was rounded. It was weird. Rounded bookcases. Where do you put them? No, 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 no. <laughs> I have to take a picture of this, my friend. It's insane. It's actually beautiful, and it fits in her spot perfectly. Yeah, I mean, it, it takes a certain spot, right? Like, it's, you can't just like throw it up anywhere. Yeah, I'm gonna send you a picture. Yeah. Here, I'm gonna eat. Oh, here we go back to our rounded. This is cute. Yes, that's from Gabby. Um, it's got these little, I think it's wood or maybe shell, but these little detailed around the edges. The thing I loved about this, and you may not be able to see it from this photo, but it's, um, I think it's wood, uh, is the scale. I mean, it's, I don't know the exact, I mean, I think maybe it's 60 inches high. It was huge. Um, and it just looked so cool on top of this console. Um, and I just, I really like that piece a lot. I'm loving and again, this. Again, curved edges fixture. and details. Yeah. Statement details. I'm loving this light fixture too. It's very yeah. massive, but it's cute. Very tall. Oh, there's the favorite. That's my fave. Um, Best. I love it. Love it. Does it come in a longer size too? If you have like a massive size island? That's a great question. Massive. I have no idea, but it should. If it doesn't, yeah, that's have really reports, call me. Oh, that's beautiful. So this is from a vendor. Um, that I found three or four markets ago, actually from Jeannie. She showed Yeah, them she's a hoop. I was going to say you must have found her from them from hoop, from Jeannie because Jeannie's obsessed with Hoopay and I am obsessed with their furniture. Yeah, Hoopay is great, obsessed. but they're hard to find. So you have to like know to go there. Um, and this is one of their new introductions. It's actually a whole line that was a new introduction for them. But um, this desk in particular, you can customize too. So that little like top piece can go away if you don't want it there. Um, there's a lot of different elements you can play with, um, but I just love the color of the wood, um, how it's kind of dainty, but you know, it had a stone top. And then um, this isn't one of my picks, but it was really cool, those lights above it. Yeah. They had these, like everywhere, they had these magnetic boards and you could just move those lights around and swivel them any way you want, pick them up, move them. It was, they were really cool. That's super unique. That's really pretty. This is gorgeous. That is from Interlude. It is a um, wrapped dresser. I believe it's wrapped in li like lacquered linen, if I remember correctly. It looks kind of greenish, but it's like a grayish green. Um, and even the handles are leather or uh, wrapped. So I just like the detailing on it. And it was just a nice solid piece. I feel like it's hard to find a good dresser that um, isn't just the plain old box over and over. Yeah. Yeah. And it, yeah, exactly. feels different. I know everybody was saying they hope gray went away. Um, but I do like the uniqueness and the poles are really beautiful. Um, I did hear that there was like markers on pieces that say like in stock. Um, is that true? Cause I see this one saying new, I've never seen that before at market, but, um, is that true? Like they had pieces that where they were like, like clearly marked in stock. So designers knew what they could get their hands yes, on. Yes. But there were some, there were some pieces where like the, even the, the reps were like, don't even go near it. Like, don't even look at it. <laughs> oh God. Really it for, like, um, yeah. So yeah, there was a little bit of that too, for sure. Okay, so this is, unfortunately is the best picture I got with this table, but this table, if you get a chance to go online to look at it, is incredible. It's from McGuire. Um, that is Laura Carrar. She's a designer um, and she created this whole line. She created that chair, which was also incredible. But um, this table is called the Taru table. It's probably the only one I remember the name of. It's T-A-R-U. And it looks like leather around the base, but really it's curled rattan. Um, that looks like suede and it's just the just the detailing on this table alone is insane um, and I just like loved everything about it I mean you can't have kids if you have this table but no. it, <laughs> it's incredible it's like a work of art and like I feel like every market I go to I got to pick at least one or two that are just like true works of art even that chair was hand woven rawhide that caning is hand woven oh. rawhide so it was super durable, but it was just like incredible and so comfortable. And I encourage all of you to go look at her whole collection that she debuted at market. It was. Uh, and this leather detail. Oh my God. No, it's not leather. That's what I'm saying. It looks like leather. Wait, what is it? And they tried to make it leather. I had a whole, she had told me the whole like production. They tried to make it leather, but it didn't hold up. So they used um, curled, uh, uh, hand curled rat um, rattan. Oh, okay. Now that I'm comprehending. Like, like up close, I was like, "That's leather, right?" And I like, I had to touch it to even know it wasn't leather. Like, it looks wow. just like great. 
That's beautiful, Sarah. That's really good. Yeah, cool. McGuire, if you guys don't know, McGuire is amazing. Their table so we saw. And that to answer guy. your question, they did come in other colors. Um, I don't remember the other colors, but I do remember seeing other colors there. Got it. And this is a chair that is definitely hugging you and holding. This your is hand. definitely a swaddle <laughs> chair. Uh, this is from Nuevo. I just thought it was a cute Love little it. piece that was like, yeah, gonna hug you and like it was playful and fun, but like it still live in a formal living room if it had to, or even in the kids' room. It doesn't really matter where it goes. It's just it's fun. It has a quirky little personality. Yeah, yeah. Love that. That was actually the first piece I spotted. This is cute. Palachek is all well. I good. love everything Palachek does too. And if I lived in a coastal city, I would probably be their biggest customer. But um, I, I love this bar stool. And what I didn't get a picture of on the back is um, the back is all rattan on that back, um, the back of it. Um, you can't yeah. see it, so I didn't even try to zoom in. I didn't get a picture of it. But um, okay. it was a brass base, and then this rattan on the back, and it or caning on the back. And it was um, it was just super cool. And I feel like bar stools are like the magical unicorn that are hard to find. So totally. when you find a good one, you gotta you gotta stick with it. Swoop it up. Yep. Okay. <laughs> also, <laughs> this one, uh, really it. also did this for Paragon Art. Um, she showed it to me and I was like, girl, I gotta get it. I gotta have it. <laughs> this is Helene, you need that in your office. I need to get it and put it in my office um, and send it to a few of my clients. Um but so funny. It, but it's like it was like a fun reminder. And I just feel like yeah. it doesn't you don't have to be a designer to like this. Everybody's got clients of some sort. So yeah. um, I just I love the playfulness of it. <laughs> So cute. This is okay. Beautiful. So this is from Regina Andrew, another vendor. I love a lot of the stuff that they do. This, what I liked about this that was so unexpected is the whole thing is metal, even the shade. So um, I just liked that it was just a little bit different. It was moody. It was, but it like the scale was pretty big. Um, I just, and but it was like a dainty line. I just like the balance of all that. Love that. Okay, this is from Bro, and most people know Bro for their upholstery, um, but I was talking to my rep. They used to have like four case good occasional furniture pieces, and now he said they have over, I think, 200. Um, so this was one of their new introductions, um, this coffee table, and I know some people have strong feelings about glass top coffee tables. I personally like them because they're almost impossible to destroy, especially if you have kids. Um, but I, again, I like the rounded edges um, I like the dainty lines of it. And if you've got a, a room that has big pieces of furniture, I feel like this is a way to um, balance it out. Love that. We saw that guy. The bed, yeah. Oh, rugs. Oh, yeah. Oh, this Pretty. is from Surya, one of my faves. They're great. Um, and if you haven't worked with Surya, they're amazing to work with, super easy to work with. Um, and this is just one of their new hand knotted introductions. Um, it comes in several colors, actually. I like this color, but there's also like a reddish color, which I normally am not a red person, but I really liked it. Um, and it just had like a nice feel to it. Just, it, I feel like it's, it's like really a very usable rug. It's super pretty. And their price point's relatively good. Totally. Oh, this is beautiful. Okay. I'm so sick of straight sectionals, I told you. So this is like, I called this the party sofa because it's like, <laughs> imagine just like, because it's like so conversational. And um, this is, I think it's called like the Evelyn sofa maybe. Um, it, you can configure it a million different ways. And if you've never ordered from Vanguard, you should know that like you can customize just about everything. Um, and so it's, this is huge. I, again, should have put the picture of me, of me sitting on it because I look like a toddler sitting on it. It's so big. <laughs> But um, it's, I just loved the round shape of it. I loved how conversational it was. And it was so just different and unexpected. And I liked the ways that you could change it, like put that little table piece in the middle, or you could change that and make that just a seat. There's just a lot of different ways to, to play with it. I love this. And the ball pillows are interesting. I know. <laughs> <Definitely interesting. laughs> this is really, really fun though. And I love that you're like, Instead of people just having an electric sofa and like staring at the TV, like you said, this is more conversational. It's like people are gathering at their homes um, and like this is a wave of the future. Um, and it just totally. feels like it's all um, and yeah. very welcoming. Total party sofa. Total party sofa.
Okay, now let's spend the last little bit of our uh, time together talking about how you are pivoting your business a little bit in terms of the sourcing challenges, um, how you're sourcing from maybe different vendors, how you're having tough conversations with your clients. Um, what does that look like for you, Sarah? Yeah, so I will say, I'll start by saying that the best thing about all of this going on about how we can't get anything, supply chains all screwy, whatever, whatever, is it's now affecting customers personally outside of design. So they're more understanding of it than they were in the very beginning of it all. I remember calling clients in the beginning of it all and they're like, what do you mean I can't get it for six months? What do you mean it's this and this and this? And now because they're ordering a pair of shoes, can't get them or they're ordering um, you know, something else for their house and they can't get it. So the fact that they're experiencing it on their own makes it more them more understanding towards us. The, it's out of our hands. So having that upfront conversation with them and just being open and communicative is the best way to sort of avoid the issues in my mind for anything in life, but for this specifically. Um, we also, we've been buying a lot more vintage. Obviously the vintage market has exploded because of this, um, because it's available and it's there. So it's like you have to wait on it. It's, I think that's gonna make prices of the vintage market drive up a little bit, unfortunately. So you're gonna have to scour a little bit more, but that's a great way to do it. And then getting it made locally. Now the biggest issue with getting it made locally is that they also might have issues getting materials but at least you're giving back to your own community. It's staying in your own economy and mm -hmm. you're able to sort of oversee quality control and trying to get as much made locally as possible. Because even for a while when we couldn't get stuff from overseas, I was like, well, let's get stuff made in America. Well, it's like now you can't get stuff on freight. So it's like it's one thing after another. So if you can find local artisans, I think now's the time to really um, put them to work if they if they can take work. Yeah, that's the other thing is that people it's the yeah kind of an interesting I mean Austin is crazy so you know if you've got anybody for me let me know <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah like bring people in from other cities other states when you're signing on a new client let's talk about your contract did you add like an addendum about lead times like how have you taken action to proactively kind of cover your own no self? no but we do have a clause in our contract about um deadlines and and those sorts of things and just saying that everything is basically just a date that we're throwing out there but does not actually mean anything that we're holding being held to so it's pretty open-ended but it's more like even before there were all these delays it's like who knows how long this project's going to take we'll, we'll put together a schedule but we you need to know that things are going to change and you have to be flexible that's just the nature of the beast and how often are you in contact with your customers like i don't know i know designers used to weekly have like a friday update like here's what's coming in here's what's not usually you do one install at a time what does that communication look like are you being proactive um because i just want to understand like versus like pre-pandemic what the communication was like versus now yeah. um and you know even my amazon packages were delayed this week honestly yeah. so yeah. like you said it's yeah. So we uh, just in general, we send weekly updates throughout the entire lifespan of a project. So that happens every Monday of what's going to happen that week. Um, but in terms of delays and those sorts of things, what we do is we, we we tell them kind of what's going on in the marketplace before we start anything. But once we have actual tangible items to tie it to, we do give them regular updates. But it isn't until we we kind of like we're so hopelessly optimistic that maybe something will show up early or whatever. So we try to wait a little bit to have that tough, tough conversation until we say like, oh, it's just not going to happen by this certain date um, with enough leeway. But we just and then we have that conversation with them about those specific pieces. But yeah, there's a weekly cadence, if not more so. I mean, we talk to them every week, but then there's usually much more than just that one weekly update that they're hearing from us. Nice, nice. So that's definitely something if you're not doing with your clients, you should be doing. Um, I mean, it's kind of it handling. Be your existence, but it's definitely something that has to be done, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, really, really insightful. We could have a whole secondary conversation about how to communicate with your clients and maybe we will have a follow-up <laughs> session we'll keep today's session mostly positive and light um but yes i i see that somebody was asking to do an edited walk through video from the market location that's actually what we did sharon that's super um great feedback we did that previously in april of 2020 um where we did like live walkthroughs with the vendors um and something that we can think about doing for april high point 
Uh, as a team um, on the house side, we're actually trying to get back to market. Um, we haven't been traveling in two weeks um, or two weeks, two years. <laughs> um, and definitely something that we can work on. Um, if you have any feedback, feel free to shoot us an email, drop my email back in the chat. Um, and thank you so much for joining us. Oh my gosh, I missed all these questions that were up here. I'm glad that y'all are keeping track. I just saw them all pop up. I was like, oh no. I know, I know. Oh, there's like more questions. Okay, here's a couple questions before we jump up. What are your yeah. favorite holiday gifts to give clients? That's a great question. I don't give them anything, but um, I like, I would probably, I think we did like bottles of wine one year. I don't know. I'm not really good at that. I always forget about that sort of thing. I'll ask my assistant when she starts <laughs> to speak, what we should do for Christmas. So funny. Um, yeah. And then the other thing I was going to mention is um, I have seen, I have gotten a couple really cute gifts from designers, but I think that Sometimes it's nice to not do something at the holidays, like before the holidays yes. happen or after yes. New Year's. Like we've done, New, we've done New Year's gifts, like after the New Year. Actually, we've also done um, back to school gifts, like little like schooly themed baskets before. But um, that's been what. Love that. Yeah, you're probably doing things and you just forget what you're doing. But I like the idea because sometimes things can get lost in the shuffle in the holidays and then it might arrive late and you're stressed out and you're trying to close down your business. Um, yeah. So New Year's gifts. People are inundated anyways, you know? Yeah, totally. Did we miss anything else? Let's see. What is? Oh, somebody's asking, what is blue clay? Blue clay. Okay, so it's um. Oh gosh, it's like a curled wool almost. Um, it's it's like a nubby wool, and actually, it is really high performance. But um, but it also can like get matted very easily and destroyed really easily. Even though like if you spill on it, it's not a big deal. Um, but yeah, it's um, I don't know, it's. It's like a nubby wool. Yeah, and we didn't show any of it because it wasn't seriously <laughs> but, right. But yeah, like from what I was looking at, blue clay, curvy, organic, soft edges. Um, blue clay is going to be the thing in three or four years. It will be like, ugh, and like get rid of it. Like it's going to be the trendy thing we all want to get rid of. It's kind of, I want to do a really quick screen share. Um, let's see if I can find a picture really quickly. Uh, I can't. If you if you Google it, you'll see. But it's like yes, and I feel like it might start looking old after a while. Is that what That's you what mean? We're gonna be yeah. like, oh, I love this boucle, and then in like literally, it'll be like the trendy thing that you'll be like, please go away, boucle. Yeah, yeah. Hold on, I'm gonna do a quick screen share. If I, can I feel the same way about world wood, but you know, I'm in the minority on that too. So. Uh <laughs> Yeah. Um, if you like, I definitely feel like it's like kind of when you have a sweater and the sweater starts to like pill. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, like I'm not being negative sweater. here, but, but I like, I like, I'm not saying I hate it like this. Is that a good example? <laughs> Synthony, you have it in a Chanel jacket. Yeah. That's yeah, different. exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. If it's Chanel, you're good sitting on a Chanel jacket. <laughs> And, and that's like, Chanel. <laughs> good point there. It's bad with pets. So that's also something to account for. Yeah. Yes, trends are amazing and it's good to stay on top of that. But like what works for your client, right? Totally. Um, and do they have pets? Do they have kids? Most of the time they have both. So um, you want to work within what's going to yes. last over time. Yes. So it'll hold up all the spills, but not necessarily hands. Great. Awesome. Well, thank you so much again, Sarah, for your time. Really appreciate it. Always look, love, love seeing your face. And I hope to see you sometime Same. in your future. Um, thank you, everyone, You're for joining us it. today. Um, and we'll continue to do this. We know you might not be able to make it to some of the markets um, over time. Um, so more than happy to be a resource for you. Definitely join our community. If you have more questions about us, about what we're doing, about House Pro, shoot me an email. Um, Sarah, you can shoot her an email, too. I'm sure she'd be willing to chat. One of the biggest things we'd love is our community here. Um, so thank you so much and we'll see you all soon. Bye.